President Buhari saw in 36 ministers into his cabinet. And the Nigerian customs generate 747 billion naira in 10 months. Nigeria bond yields fall sharply as the central bank eyes lending. Hello, you're watching BTVA's Business Nigeria, and I am Tunji Andrews. We will start the show today with the top leading stories. Uh, President Mohamed Buhari swore in 36 ministers into his cabinet today, uh, five months and two weeks after his inauguration. His cabinet is smaller than that of his predecessor, good luck Jonathan, who had 42 ministers. Well, under the Constitution, the president must include a member from each of the country's 36 states. Kemi Adeosu is the Minister of Finance, while Emmanuel Kachuku is the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. Dr. Okechuku Enelema is the Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment. Joining me in the studio is BTVA senior researcher Oluatosi Olaseinde and Adeboyega Olatude to discuss appointments. We will be uh, focusing on just three ministers, but let's start with the former investment banker, Kemi Adeosun. Boiga, you had some numbers for us uh, from yeah. when she was uh, commissioner in Ogu State, where yeah. she was commissioner she was for finance, finance in Ogu a State. similar role to what Michi, she's going yeah. to be doing for the country. Yeah. So let's look at the numbers. Okay, Tunji. Now, the first number I want to show you is 70.2 billion naira. That is Ogun's locally denominated debt stock as of December 31st, 2014. Um, that figure is actually larger because the external, the dollar-denominated one, is about 110, uh, about 110 million US dollars. So Ogun State actually has debt stock of almost about 90, 92 billion naira. Now, where it gets interesting is the fact that over the past four years, that debt grew from a figure of about 18 billion to 70. So in about four years, debt has grown by an absolute two hundred and eighty-four percent. It's compounded growth about forty percent a year. Whereas revenue has just grown from about ten point eight billion to about seventeen point five. It's grown what sixty-one percent in four years, but compounded growth is about thirteen percent year on year. Now, obviously, as you can see, the debt revenue ratios have not improved in the four years. So it's gone from about one point six eight to about four point zero one in the four years. Mm. Now, Ogun State is also one of the states that had to take a bailout of about seventy-five billion. True. So, but that has been converted to long, long-term equity, more or less. I mean, but Tosi, I mean, looking at these numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Especially as we we uh, we heard the vice president speak about this a, a few weeks ago, or was a few days ago, saying that the uh, 2016 budget would be in the range of seven to eight, eight trillion, trillion yeah. naira. And um, we've all been asking, where's the money going to come from? Yes. I mean, since now she's finance minister, and you can look at the Ogu, you know, numbers over a significant period. Where do you think she's going to be raising the money from? Most likely, they might go through the route of raising debt. Also, she also spoke about how tax collect collection can be busted. So that could also be an avenue that she's looking at. And also, she spoke about ta waiving tax, tax waivers, how they can review that and also improve fiscal policies. All of these would be what we can be expected to drive the funding of the debt. Well, I mean, uh, there's also an, a, a quote we, we have from uh, Budget, yeah. uh, State of States, which, uh, I mean, that's a report that Budget recently uh, released. And it says, uh, it's talking about Ogu State. It says, another fairly managed state. Ogu's interlinearly generated revenue is up from 10.84 billion naira in 2011 oh, to 17.5 billion naira in 2014, which you just said, Boyega. Uh, nevertheless, with personal costs pegged at, at, at approximately 59 billion, billion naira per annum, close watchers believe its governments have not been running Ogu State at full fiscal, fiscal capacity, capacity and have voiced on ease with the state's propensity for debt. For debt. 12% to GDP as we stand now. I'm, am I might be the only one uneasy here. Well, Tunji, no. Um, typically, your, your government has three revenue streams. First will come from crude oil sales. The second one comes from um, tax revenues. And the third one comes from customs. Yeah. Now, on the customs side, you are already, what, about 20% behind your budget year to date. Um, on the tax revenue side, 
Fortunately, you have employed the former chairman of the Lagos Internal Revenue Service. Who, who actually the boosted yeah. revenue, uh, who, revenue, who collection grew revenue in Lagos. from about two billion? Lagos State grew from about two billion per month revenue state to about twenty-three billion state. In the person of uh, Babatunde Fowler. Now you have done that, but the major question is: Will all prices that are supposed to complement what you're trying exactly. to do? But to see, I mean, um, what, looking at her, she spoke about the FX re regime yes. of the central bank. She seems to be in alignment with the central bank. Yes, she said. She said that the exchange rate is not a silver bullet, and also she seems to take sides with the CBN, stating that the forex policy actually has given the CBN on ease and has allowed them to save interest. So. I think she's going to lean towards them. Um, she's not going to lean towards a devaluation. So we can obviously cancel out devaluation. The president has said no devaluation. The vice president has said no devaluation. The CBN governor has said no devaluation. Now the finance minister has, has said, said no has devaluation. Said no devaluation. devaluation. Yes. So I mean, we can uh, just kiss devaluation. No, goodbye. but the question is whether devaluation hasn't occurred already. Um, you have an official exchange rate, which is 200 naira. You have a parallel exchange rate of about 230. You have an electronic transfer rate, which is maybe about 230 to 35. So you have a spread of about 15% in between your official and your parallel rates. Now, my own take is this. If every single transaction cannot be funded by official rates, has a devaluation already occurred? But then I have to disagree with you on that, though, because everybody has been saying that in terms of that, in that space, we haven't really had a fiscal policy and industrial policy. How about we wait and see in the next two months with the fiscal policy and industrial policy that we put in place, would that do anything in order to narrow that gap? That we I see? mean, that, that's what we're waiting for because she has a lot on her table right yeah. now. Falling crude oil prices, is, expanding, uh, uh, rev, uh, expanding needs for cash. Yes, yeah. I mean, and also uh, what you want to look at again is that she's, she spoke about uh, reducing interest rates, yes. but with inflation at about 9%, 9.4%. It's, I mean, she's, she's, she's really going to have to look at that. We're going to have to look at forcing down inflation before she talks about uh, reducing is, interest one rates. One of the key ways you can force down inflation is to improve productivity. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you, you're not competitive, and that's the key thing, we, the challenge we have as a nation, are we competitive production-wise? Mm -hmm. And I, that's, as long as you don't have that, I mean, then, speaking about really? production, uh, Emmanuel Kachuku, fantastic when he fantastic became MD yes. of uh, NMPC. Yes. I mean, we saw transformation within the first two months. Yeah. Everybody was raving about him. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's removed from that position. We heard he's going to be made a minister. Oh. We're wondering what position. Now he's made minister oh, of petroleum, state for, for petroleum, petroleum resources. resources. I'm asking myself. Isn't that a step down? Because no, it's it, not. it kind of it, it does look like a step up, but is it that is that not a step I down? Don't, I don't think so. I think um, in this in this in this particular case, what you have is a situation where the president has taken the responsibility of saying, you know what? For now, I will be petroleum minister. De facto petroleum, De facto petroleum, petroleum, petroleum minister. Petroleum minister. But he's also said, look, in the advent that I can't perform all the day-to-day -day technical Actism. duties yeah. of the petroleum minister. I should have someone who will give me all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, as a minister of state for petroleum, I'm going to assume that the MD of NMPC, NMPC. reports to you yeah. and everyone else. Well, mm -hmm. that, that, is true to, that is true to an extent, but we'll continue to follow that also. I mean, it's, it's important that we, we have all these facts and figures yeah. at, at the back of the our mind is, because that is a critical source of revenue. Yeah, but and, you know, Kachuku did say recently in the papers that if crude oil falls to some levels or yeah, uh, our production be cost raises, to uh, yeah. rises to some levels, yes. we might have to totally close down some... $30. I, I mean, that, that is a significant worry. You see, now, the thing, and part of the reasons why I agree with the, with the president on this is simply this. With, with him being MD of NMPC, you get to influence policy change in NMPC. With him being Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, you get to influence policy change across that industry. Well, we'll continue to follow that story for you, but as you know, 36 ministers have been named into uh, the president's cabinet and they were sworn in earlier today. Uh, uh, they've been sworn in today also. Now, uh, finally, Dr. Okechuku Enelama, he's the Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment. He's worked as a uh, uh, he served as the director for Emerging Markets uh, uh, that's a, at a private equity 
um, Association and uh, former non-executive director of UAC uh, Nigeria since 2010. I mean, this is a critical role because, I mean, trade and investment. Yeah. Uh, this is the time we're looking to have more FDI coming into yes. Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, since JP Morgan pretty much took away some of our uh, FBI, this is the time we're looking for longer investments, yeah. longer term investments. Yeah. He has his work cut out for him. He, is he the man for the job? Absolutely. Without a doubt in my mind. Absolutely. Um, he's coming from running African Capital Alliance. The African yeah. Capital Alliance is arguably one of the largest equity. private equity firms in Nigeria, if not. The biggest. If not um, amongst the biggest in Africa. Now, the thing about African Capital Alliance is if you look at their portfolio of investment, it cuts across all sectors of the economy. Uh, they at one point invested in UACN, conglomerate, the conglomerate sector via UACN. They have investments in SWIFT, telecoms. They had investments in ABC Transport. Um, they had property investments. You know, so you're talking about someone who has been there, done that. They had initial investments in MTN. You know, so you're talking about someone who... So is, he does have that pedigree. Yes, yeah. he does have that pedigree of bringing a company in, uh, either bringing a company, in, con uh, company into the country or making sure that, okay, you know what, we will stand side by side and make sure that things are run properly. And here. being somebody who ran a private equity firm, exactly. he will know how to uh, create deals and he will know the kind of deals Nigeria will probably exactly. need. Yes. Exactly. Yes, interesting. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at uh, the capital structure Reorganization, do not go anywhere. This is Business Nigeria. Welcome back. Uh, so, Bega, we will be taking a look at uh, share reconstruction. Could you run us through it as a concept? Okay, Sunji. Um, Unity Bank yesterday, it was in the papers yesterday that Unity Bank um, reconstructed their share sometime back in 2015. And the shareholders were complaining that they lost about 70, 75%. And I said, okay, the question is this. When you do a reorganization, which typically involves either reconstruction or reduction, in the number of shares you have, does it create value for you or does mm. it destroy it? Interesting point. Now, a share reconstruction basically means I had 2 billion shares at 1 Naira. Now I have 1 billion shares at 2 Naira. So I, when, the when the reconstruction is done, I typically have less shares but the same value. Ah. Okay? Now, there usually is a rationale for doing it. Now, that rationale usually is what? One, I reduce the number of shares I have outstanding, so I'm able to pay bonuses on fewer number of shares. Two, it increases the theoretical price of the shares. You, you saw it go from one to two in the previous slide. It reduces cost, obviously, um, the cost of maintaining a register for shareholders for a, a 25 billion. Yeah, it's usually a lot more expensive for a 25 billion shares in issue rather than um, a 10 billion. And it also attracts investors because you know that you have more leeway to do bonuses and all that. Now, the interesting thing also is that when you're talking about a share reduction, it typically involves reducing the number of shares, like a share reconstruction, but in this case, you're canceling those shares. So, it's ah. a, it, whereas a share reconstruction is simply, you had two billion, now you have one billion, right? A share reduction means I had one billion, I'm canceling 400 million, so now I have four, um, 600 million. And guess what? In a share um, reduction, they actually give money back to shareholders. To shareholders. Yeah, they actually give money back to shareholders. Typical example, Cadbury did, Cadbury did one last year. We'll get to that in, in a few minutes. Um, now, the rationale behind it, obviously, is to 
um, increase shareholder value, reduce, and make it a more efficient capital structure, and return cash to shareholders. Now, also, now when you're checking, you also see that the CAC has specific, specific requirements for, for your capital reduction. The first thing, you have to have a special resolution signed by a director and two company secretaries, a certified true copy, um, a certified true copy of that reduction, a notice of that reduction, it has to be filed with the commission within 15, 15 days. days, evidence of that publication, a court order approved meeting that should have the amount of the share capital, the number of shares into which share capital is divided, amount, amount of each share, and the amount that is supposed to be paid. Right? Now, examples that we're going to be looking at. The first and foremost that readily comes to my mind, International Energy I Insurance. Yeah, I I I yes. They've done... Um, share reconstructions twice. Now, the first time they did a share reconstruction, this was in 2007, and it was a one for three or a three for one. That's what they called it. So that means you had one reconstructed share for every three you previously held. So if you had three hundred shares, yeah, you yeah. have a hundred now. Yeah. And basically, it was at 193 before construction, and, and it became five, five naira, seven, seven, nine, five, seven, after construction. Now, if you were fortunate at some point to have been able to sell. Maybe you could have gone out at 760, maybe. But where did it end up trading at? 50 Kobo. Now, wow. where it gets interesting, in 2013, they said, OK, you know what? We still have about 7 billion shares in issue or about 5 billion shares in issue. Let's do another reconstruction. So the reconstruction was done, ratio of 1 for 5. Right. So the that's one for every five you initially held. Yes. So you now have one new one for every five you initially held. It was 50 Kobo then. So they reconstructed it to... And it went up to 2 Naira. 250 Kobo. Kobo. Exactly. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Look at the value. So if you started with your initial, what, 600,000 units that you had at 197, that would have cost you 1.158 million. Now, by the time they finished the second reconstruction, you would have approximately what? Maybe 40,000 shares now. Now, that 40,000 shares is currently trading at 50 Kobo. And it comes to just about 20,000 Naira. So, in effect, you'd have lost 98% of your total investment. Yes. So, you, had, you started with 1.158 million, you're ending up with 20,000 Naira. Wow. Now, that's IEI. <laughs> Skybank. Sky Bank actually did a reconstruction. This, it, might sound, it might sound funny, but they actually did do a reconstruction before they came to the capital market for the first time. They came, I think, the first time, January 2008, 2.2 uh, .2 billion shares at about 14 naira. But the reconstruction then was a one for three. It was 306 before, and it was 683 afterwards. Now, if the savvy investor, Sky Bank at one point, traded as high as 1985, so you could have made good money. You True. honestly could have made good money. But what I have done is to assume two things. One, that you decided, OK, you know what? I'm, I'm a long-term investor. Long -term. I'm a long-term investor. I'm not going to worry about dividends. I'm just going to focus on what is the value, because I'm presuming that every time I receive dividends, I spend them. So what is the value of what I had then, and what is the value now? Now, if you had 300,000 units then, you had, what, 918,000. Mm -hmm. Skybank currently trades yesterday at, what, 199. So you're... 918,000 right now is about 200. So you've lost about what? 77% of value destroyed. Yes. Now, Unity Bank, the example we saw yesterday, I had to confirm this when I saw it. And they did a 1 for 10. Or In April a 10 for of 1. 2015. Yeah, they, and this was, this was this year. So they had about 116 billion shares, and they canceled about 105 out of that. So it was, a, it was a 1 for 10. And the shares then were 50 Kobo. They reconstructed it to what? 5 Naira. 5 Naira. Now, the beautiful thing is, that's the highest. The day they lifted that suspension on it, it's been downhill since. So now your reconstructed shares were worth what? 100, what? You, they were worth 500,000? For, uh, for 1 million units. Yeah, now it's worth about 136,000. So you've lost effectively about what? 73%. 73% basically. Now, you know, we've basically done, we've done banks, we've done insurance companies. Now, let's do one of the big boys. And this is the most interesting of them all. Cadbury. Cadbury, Cadbury did a share reduction, right? It cost them about, in, in terms of cash that they paid out, they paid out about 12 billion, 
12 billion naira. Um, what they did was to cancel about 40% of the outstanding shareholding. So that's why you see the ratio 2 for 5. This was done January last year, and that's why you see that ratio 2 for 5. So at that point, what they said was, okay, technical suspension, the price is at 58.27. When we reconstruct, the price is going to be at 90.79. We're also going to give you back 9 naira 50 kobo for every share that we've cancelled. So if you had 100,000 shares, about 5.28 million, as at the date of the cancellation, well, when it was this step back at 9070, you would have had, what, 5.45 million, and it would have returned 380,000 to, to you in cash. But guess what? Cadbury is currently trading, as I yesterday, at 20 naira, 10 kobo. So your 5.8 million, 5.83 million, is now 1.2 million. So you've lost about 70. 79%. Now, Tunji, I want to ask you this. What is your own verdict on everything we've seen looking at this? Wow. 79% value yes. lost on IEI, 77% lost on Sky Bank, 73% lost on Unity Bank, and 79% lost on Cadbury. So now look at it this way. Ooh. If you had one million, if you had one million in this, in this, in this, in this, you've that means lost you've lost close to your initial investment exactly so basically the person that loses in a, a share reconstruction it's is the, the shareholder, shareholder. It, it's sad it's not supposed to be because ideally there are some factors you reconstructed your shares ideally um, your efficiency is supposed to get better in terms of your share bloats so you have fewer number of shares outstanding it's supposed to improve efficiency but a lot of times people have viewed it as cosmetic this basically shows that for a lot of shareholders, particularly Nigerian shareholders, at least looking at these four companies, that it's been cosmetic, really. Because if Cadbury, hmm. if Cadbury, if I had almost six million in Cadbury, and right now I had 1.2, honestly, do you think you could get me to invest in Cadbury again? No. Thanks again, Boyega. And now let's take a look at the rest of the top stories. Nigeria's bond yields fall sharply as central bank eyes lending. The yields on the Nigeria's bonds uh, fell sharply across maturities on Tuesday as liquidity surged on the interbank money market. Traders said, um, adding that the central bank uh, was loosening monetary policy to spur credit growth. And also, the Nigerian customs has uh, generated about 747 billion naira in 10 months. Uh, the customs service says, he has says it has generated about, you know, close to 750 billion naira in revenue in the last 10 months. This was said by the Controller General, Colonel, Colonel Ahmed Ali. Uh, he stated this and stated that the target given to the service by the federal government was 944 billion naira. Now, that is the much we can take on the show today. Do not forget you can follow us on Twitter at BTVA Newsroom. My Twitter handle is at Tunji Andrews. And we'll be back tomorrow giving you the best of economic and market update. Till then, keep doing business, Nigeria. Stay safe.